Hello, I am Izzy, and today I will be taking you through summary of the Life Changer novel. Welcome back to the Life Changer summary, notes, likely questions, and many of words used in the novel. This is part two of the class. If you miss part one, I highly recommend that you go through that class. I will share a link to part one. I've covered chapter one summary, questions, notes, and many of words used. I was also to able to give important facts from the novel and the areas the novel covers from chapter one to chapter nine. I will share a link to that video. And something else that is important is the Flash Learners Jam CBT application. It contains thousands of jump questions, competition to win 30,000 Naira, and also further questions from the Life Changer novel. So visit flashlearners.com or Google Play Store, search Flash Learners, you'll see the novel. They are very, very helpful. So take a bottle of chilled water, relax, and let us continue the journey. Chapter 2. Chapter 2 tries to explain the life changer. Remember in chapter 1, Umi told Oma, who recently gained admission or who just gained admission to study, to study at Abu Zaria, that this admission is a life changer. Oma was like, what do you mean by admission is a life changer? That is where the name life changer is gotten from. And she said, admission will change you and your life. That is actually the truth. When you gain admission to study at the university, polytechnic, or college of education, that five years, four years, or six years you are spending in school is really a life changer. It will change you and it will change your life. So what it changes you to is determined by you, but it's surely going to change you and it's surely going to change your life. So she began to narrate a story of Sama, how she met Sama in school. She started that it was their day of clearance. They were on the queue to collect sleep or to be cleared. So she was there, they were in queue. And there was delay. Normally, if you gain admission into any Nigerian university or polytechnic, one thing you will face is stress. Because maybe you gain admission, you are very happy. I want to leave home. I want to go to school. Nobody will come in to wash the dishes. Nobody will come in to do that. You feel you are gaining freedom. But immediately you go into school, it's another world entirely. You face stress, queue. So while they were on the queue, waiting for registration or for the next level, because you have to register course, register GSD, collect your math number, you move from one office to another. Before you finally settle down, it will be up to two weeks in school so that is the process while they were lined up for registration a girl came fine girl and as a guy one thing you see in school is very pretty girls everywhere and as a girl you see very very fine boys packaged you'll be wondering what's going on so by the time you start looking at girls or you start looking at boys <laughs> you will get so confused because you will see them everywhere so the girl came packaged According to the novel, she is endowed like every is there. Face is okay, hair is okay, hair is okay, the shape is there on figure eight. She just came, trying to go to the front to beat the queue. And you know students, and we Nigeria generally, what's your problem? You just came and you are going forward, blah, 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 blah. She was like, calm down, relax. I'm a very fine girl. By the time I go to this office, Registration will start immediately because they delayed them in the queue. Lecturers collect if you are a boy, they need your money. If you are a girl, they will ask you on a date. That is her belief. While she was talking, a young guy came to him. How are you? He said, I'm fine. The guy was asking, Are you sure what you're saying is true? That all lecturers they will either ask you on a date or they will need your money. She said, yes, it's true. So she was condemning the lecturers. In the process, one young guy came from the office to meet this guy she was con condemning lecturers in front of to drop the key. Like, sir, 
I'm done cleaning your office. That was when they that was when they all realized that the young man that was interrogating Sama is the lecturer and is the person that was going to register them. Seeing that Sama was ashamed. Wow, I've messed up. So the whole crowd were now looking at her. She left there, which is Umi is the one telling the story. She was in the queue and Sama came. So she was telling us how Sama behaved in the queue and how she stayed for a long time in the queue before registration started. When Umi was done, she went to the HOD's office for registration. When she got to the office, the HOD was very friendly. Was like, sit down, how are you? Are you fine? I relax. So the man came close to her. Wow. So hope you are fine. How is registration going? So the man was being very, very nice. And you know guess now, by the time you see a fine girl, you are trying to talk to her, be nice. She will feel, maybe this man wants to ask me on the days. What would this man be doing like that? So Umi was very angry. Besides, immediately she gave admission. Before she, uh, she got married as well. So married student. In school, you will see men that are married and women who are married as well. So she was just doing anyhow. Sir, I'm pressed. I want to go. No. I need my math number. You know all those behavior. She felt the HOD wanted to take advantage of her. She even had to give excuse that, sir, I'm pressed. I want to use the toilet. Let me go. The HOD was like, you can use my toilet. She was like, hey, this man has cashed me to deal. How do I know? This man wants to ask me on a date. She used the toilet. She came back. So she was doing all those miss, miss me behavior. Even after she finished, she collected the math number. She was leaving. The HOD sent her his PA to follow her to the next office to show her the next place for registration. She felt angry, embarrassed. Like this man, even we see fine guests now. You know, let fine, fine guests to rest. And what contributed to that anger was what Sam has said in the queue that if you are a girl, lecturers they want to sleep with you, they want to ask you on a date, and a guy they need your money. So hearing that. She was using that mindset. This HOD, HOD wants me. She needs my money. She wants to take advantage of me. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so she left there. Now look at something else. And the name of the HOD is actually Samuel John, PhD, Dr. Samuel Johnson. That's the name of the HOD, Dr. Samuel Johnson. When she got home, she, uh, she was like, she met her husband to narrate the story, what happened in school. But before she could narrate the story, the husband was like, some persons will just be thinking they are calm. Some persons will just feel they are calm. Whereas, don't trust calm people. So as the husband was trying to say, don't trust calm people, she interrupted. This is what happened in school. So she just said the husband. I went for registration. Sama came. Then I went to HOD's office. The way the HOD was doing. HOD wants to be touching me. She wants to be nice. I don't like it. Why would HOD be doing like that? Eh? He has fights everywhere to be serious with. He dressed responsibly. He wants to be close. Uh, you believe he was saying the husband was not laughing. She was like, why are you laughing? He said, the HOD is my friend. He was even the one that walked your admission. So this means the HOD was even nice because of his relationship with the husband and how she helped the girl not to even take advantage of her. Lately, Umi heard that she was ashamed. Like, wow, I fuck up. Oh. So this might even help me, not that he's even trying to take advantage of me. So how come I behave so badly? So she begged her husband to apologize to the HOD. Now, the children asked the mothers, the mother rather, Mom, what's about the story of the quiet neighbor? And the mom say, don't worry, I will tell you. That was how chapter 2 ended. So let's see questions from chapter 2 and notes, words and meaning, and let us proceed. So the story of Umi and university as a life changer, that's what chapter 2 covers. First question here is, what was Sama's physical appearance? Because the novel describes or described her appearance. It says Sama was a fair complexioned girl, tall, slim, and rather busty. 
so tall, fell, slim, figure, eight shape, bust the bread. You know? So when they see her, ah, this girl has shape. Oh. Flat stomach. Mm, fine, fair girl. So that's her appearance. It's no wonder. So people were they're looking at her lustfully. Ah, this girl is fine, this girl is fine. And there are many girls like that. When you are passing, man, guy, who is that girl? Who is that girl? So that is the answer. And two, what does Selma believe about lecturers? The answer is simple. She believes that university lecturers take money from boys and ask girls on a date. Three, why was the HOD close to Umi? Simply because she knows her husband very well and even he was the one who worked Umi's admission. Then look at words used in chapter 2 and their meaning. Before then, look at things you should note about chapter 2. University students are carefree. When Umi gained admission, she saw people dressed anyhow. Wear what you like, top, except law students who had uniform, black and white. But other persons dressed, just live here like this. Boys, rugged, fry hair. So like they were all carefree, behaving anyhow. But according to her, some schools have rule. Abu, they say, okay, don't dress this way, don't dress that way. But generally, people dress the way they like in universities. If you get to schools like Unibet, Unibet, other schools, you see fine girls, different type of dressing. So, it's there. That is cool for you. And another thing you should take note is that, except law, then social works, and a very few faculties or departments, others, they don't wear uniform. But for engineering, you put on lab coats, and that's not every day, once in a week or so. So as you're going to the lab for practical, you put on lab coats, your shoe, you must wear shoe, thick shoe, trouser. Then you go there for your experiment, you write your report. Most schools call it ELA, Engineering Laboratory. Why pharmacy students also, while going to the lab, they put on mainly white lab coats for practicals. But apart from that, you wear what you like. To class. Umi Ahmad was the full name of the storyteller. So the novel was written by Khadija Abubakar Jali. Then in the novel, she talked about Umi and she was the one narrating the story of her school experience, how school changed her life. And according to her, she saw a lot of things in school bad experiences, good experiences, struggle, and different things. That could happen to anyone in school. Then four, according to Sama, if you are a boy, they ask for money, and if you are a girl, they ask you for a date. Now remember, I told you that Omi went to the HOD's office for matriculation number. Now, what was her matriculation number? Simple, UG 0001. Also, never judge a book by its cover. They were on the queue. They didn't know that the lecturer was with them. So they feared everyone there were students. They came for registration. So don't feel because somebody is young or calm that the person can't be big or can't be in a big position. So respect everybody equally. And the seventh note here is, the storyteller believes you shouldn't say things you are not asked. When she was at the HOD's office, and the HOD was being very nice, calm, coming close to her, she wanted to say, Sir, I am married, don't come close to me. But she felt it's not necessary. Let people ask you questions before you answer. Because if you say, I am married, you'll be like, Did I ask you? So, in your own life, learn to say things that are necessary. If you are not asked, don't say it. Okay? Say less. So here are words from chapter 2 and their meaning. The young men were the young men around were openly ugly. The, the young men around, this was trying to describe Sama. Anytime she's passing, you see the young men looking. Oh, so the young men around were openly ugly. It simply means they were staring at her, looking lustfully. 
So <laughs> the ugly that is the meaning. Then two, ineptitude of the registration officer. Some I believe that the officers were not serious. You know, some persons they'll be like, they have children at home, or they'll keep people outside to be registering. Do registration, you will not do. Heartless lecturers, useless people. This kind of talks. So that was what Simon believed that these lecturers they have children, they are heartless. So she said, ineptitude of the registration officers. So the word ineptitude or the sentence ineptitude of the registration officers describes them as lazy or they lack skill and ability. That is the meaning of ineptitude, lazy, lacking of skills, on seriousness. So take note of that sentence. Three. I just find your allegation a trifle sweeping. When she was talking to the lecturer, to the young boy, which this guy lecturer who disguised as a student, so the lecturer was like, "I find your allegation a triple sweeping." What does that mean? It simply means that I find your triple triple sweeping simply means to treat someone in a way that la respect or seriousness the way she was describing lecturers if you are a boy they take money from you if you are a girl they ask you on a date they are ineptitude they are serious they keep people aside they have children at home so she said so the young lecturer said i find your allegation a triple sweeping meaning you are treating them you are describing them in a way that lacks respect or manners So these are words and sentences used in chapter 2, including their meaning. Wow! I hope you found this helpful. Let's go to chapter 3. The mom told them about the quiet neighbor. Who was the quiet neighbor? He was simply Tele. T-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. So he's so quiet, he's calm. He was a driver for... Let's say a company of office or organization. So he drives for them. So you come back, calm, you won't talk. He was calm, naturally. But later, he lost his uh, mom or dad, family member. That made him more calm. So when they get to the office, before work, they pray. He will be at the front. Yes. So you know those spiritual people, calm. So people were like, this person is very calm. But at a point, they noticed that this man stays alone. He used to buy like one cup of rice, one cup of beans to enjoy, or one rubber. But now he's buying more, buying bags. So what is happening? And the village is where everybody, they know themselves. So they are suspecting. How come this man has upgraded? They began to check, to investigate, to find out stuff about him. It was later they discovered that he was he joined somebody Uzi to kidnap a little boy for one week. So when they were interrogating him at the palace, the police came and arrested him. We will get there while answering questions and notes. Also, three was Sama's story. Sama during registration, they were all doing registration, you know, hundred level. She entered one office. Mr. Dabo's office, D-A-B-O. This man is a principled man, very principled, well respected. Because when you get to the university, people will gist you, senior colleagues, they'll tell you that this lecturer is like this, this one is bad, this one is principled, this one, to like woman, this one, not to like woman like that, but this one, don't go close. So this Dabo has a name like that. He doesn't collect blocking. He doesn't look at guests. He's so busy and he has been in the school for long. But immediately, uh, Sama entered the office. You know, we have fine guests and we have fine guests. When you see some guests that are so packaged, like, you'll be so lost. Like, you what's the first? No, 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 no. Get behind me, Satan. <laughs> she was that pretty. So when Dabo saw her, that boy, you know, when he tried to change the principle, like, hello, pretty, can I be your friend? Can we be close? You know, a type of thing where someone you respect so much, you've heard about, trying to ask you out. So Sama insulted him. So you, this man, you will not see a, a fine girl 
and stay one place. So the man was so embarrassed. Also, she went for hostel registration and they were given hostel. In federal school, state school, when you apply for school hostel, you just choose the hostel you want. Most times they will give you the particular hostel, but you don't have control over your room and your roommates. Sometimes you'll be given another hostel. So she applied for a hostel and she was given. So there are supposed to be four in the room. She and three other female. Female hostels, male hostel. You don't miss male and female in school hostel. At first she was angry. All these roommates, I don't think they are like me. They may not match. They won't like my lifestyle. So she was angry about the roommate. And the hostel she was given, that is the happening hostel in the area, the main, the best hostel in the school. That's where the happening babes stay. In every school, you see a particular hostel or area where the big guests, in quote, stay. Five guests. Every weekend, you see different bands coming to peak, drop, peak, drop, peak, drop. So, she was in that hostel. But later, she was like, mm, we move. Let me just cope with them. They are human beings, after all. So, she was in the hostel. And one day, Later, she discovered that the roommates are actually nice persons. Who we'll describe those ones later? She was walking, and she saw a bench. The bench stopped, and you know, guess now she didn't want to enter. What am I going here? So after everything, she said, "Let me just enter." So she entered the bench, and the bench dropped her off in her hostel. Now, when they dropped her, she was expecting them to open the door for her. But the guy did not open the door for her. This is Nigeria. Many of us are not romantic. So, you know, after watching movie, Z World, Korean movie, you see romantic. Oh, sweetheart. Yeah, do this. Let me help you. Do this. But it was not like that. So, she had to come out of her car herself. And they asked for her number. She did not give them her number. She gave them her roommate's number. Now, in the room, they became so cooperative that they cook together. Enjoy. They even shared stone. I'll cook today. You cook tomorrow. You cook next tomorrow. The next day, the Benz drivers, one of them called. They've already agreed that once they call, you take the call. Disguise that you are Salma. So she disguised. Can we see later? Can we come and pick you? So after all the Shakara, everything, that they should come and pick her. She's dark, but she's so fine. And according to them, the reason why men are scared to ask her out is because she's proud, pompous. So she doesn't take nonsense. You know all those no nonsense girls around. Don't do this. No, I don't take this. So the best guys they came around to pick her. They took her out. They did shopping, bought different things, bought food, bought provision, everything for her. And the men gave her fifty thousand naira. They said you take 20,000 naira, give your roommates 10 k each. That is 50,000 naira. So she got home, she brought the food, provision, and the money. So they shared. In fact, according to the novel, if they didn't have food at home or provision, the things the politician and the driver bought for them is enough to last them for the full semester. At that point, Sama became angry jealous she was like let me bring the contact to now you are giving me this you know i was the one that gave you the contact and Ngozi was like fine you brought the contact but she actually helped us if not that she went agreed to go we wouldn't have gotten all these things in fact you don't want to go out she was trying to help you out so why are you not feeling this way so there was initial quarrel shouting happiness but they tried to resolve that now look at something else that happened on the last day, when they were in the final year, the last paper, which is moral instruction, that is a GST paper. GST stands for general studies. In every school, you find general studies. In fact, some are even general. Whether you are in science, art, engineering, physical science, whatever you are studying, you must do general course. The popular one is philosophy and logic. Philosophy is the study of wisdom so it has different branches metaphysics study of things beyond the physical epistemology knowledge also axiology value 
which is divided into ethics and aesthetics. Ethics studies value and aesthetics study beauty. Then logic, study of that which counts as sound reasoning. So philosophy and logic is a general studies course. Use of English is a general studies course. So what, no matter what you are studying, you do English in 100 level so that you improve on your English. Then use of library. Every university has school library. So you need to know how to use your school library. Code in the library. So that's another GST course. Then philosophy of science and technology. Then Nigerian people and culture. That is another GST course, general studies. So you study them irrespective of your course. Now, in every school, GST is underrated. Some persons will be like, it's not GST. I will pass, it's not hard. So they focus on the core courses. One thing about GST is that they carry low credit load. Most times, two credit load, you feel doesn't add up, doesn't add to GP. Most it adds in most schools. So they were leaving it, and this is their own GST is even moral instruction. Let's say something like CRO instruction value. So in your church, mosque, they teach you moral instruction. So they felt it's easy now. And they also felt after all, it's past question they repeat. So they will just repeat past question. I will cram past question and pass. So Sama wrote other courses well. But when it comes to this GST, she did not prepare well. She was like, it's past question now. So she just studied past question. Getting to the hall. Man, she looked at the question. She didn't know anyone. Other persons were writing. But she, she didn't know anyone. She looked, look, look, look. What should I do? What should I do? And the person sitting close to her was the, is the best student in the class or was the best student in the class. She was like, and look at one problem. When she entered the hall, the person in the lecture was a female. And the way she was dressed, the female lecturer felt intimidated. You know women, and they don't like, guys, they don't like themselves. Like, she's dressed to example. So the woman just hated that normally. The immediately the woman went out, the invigilator, she begged the scholar close to her. So the scholar quickly wrote something on the paper for her. So they call it note of salvation. Like Expo in the school. Every school they have name for Expo. Like in uni, but they call it bomb. Some schools they call it chukuli. Some they call it biscuit. So every school they have code for bomb. They are all examination malpractice. So she collected the bomb, she was just writing. Blah, 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 blah. So when the investor came back, but, ah, this person that was not writing before, how come now she's just writing? Where did the inspiration come from? So she checked and discovered that she was using bomb. So they bought my practice form. She filled the form to show that she did my practice. So blah, 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 blah. They dragged the issue to the HOD's office. And the HOD say, and since she has filled the form, there is a witness. The witness signed, which is the scholar. And take note, this scholar was even also trying to ask her out, like, I love you, can we be this? And she said, no, let's just be friends. Then the issue moved to the disciplinary committee, the, those in charge of examination my practice. She went to meet Habib. Habib is what the Benz I told you about. The owner of the Benz is Habib. Habib, look at what is happening, though. I feed my practice for more. They will rusticate me. What do I do? And Habib was like, Okay, I will tell, there's only one person who can help you. And Salman said, who? Habib said, Dabo. And immediately, <laughs> she was shocked. Because this Dabo was the man in 100 level during clearance that she insulted. The man who, was, who asked her out. That she was like, you are upright. Everybody respects you. You see me now, you can't control yourself. So she felt there is no way it can be that person. Can't it just be another person? God, why is all these things happening? And Habib, which is the Benz owner and a politician, also a speaker, said, okay, no problem. The dis uh, disciplinary committee, we can settle them. We'll give them uh, something like 200 or 300,000 naira to bribe them so that they will allow you to stay back. She said, but she doesn't have money. And Habib, which is the politician, speaker, Ben's owner said, I'll give you the money, but what will you give me in your return? So Habib said, you have to sleep with me in return. Let's for me to give you the money. And Sama was shocked. Do you know why? Habib 
you are my friend's boyfriend. And also, you know that your driver is close to me and we are doing smoking relationship. So why would you want to try this? He said, nobody will know unless you tell them. So we move. She touch, 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 daddy. He said, okay, lock the door. And Habib said, the door is already locked. So, and they did, you know that? Yeah, yeah. So, then Habib wired the 300k to her. Then, she went to meet somebody to show her the head of the disciplinary committee, the people in charge of my practice. So, when she got there, the man said, let's go to a hotel, a calm place to chill, to discuss. So, they went there to relax. And the man said, you know that we we'll have to do one or two. And she did not agree to sleep with the man. He said no. So you see her experience. Everywhere she goes, this one wants to sleep with her. The best student wants to, this one wants to. So she got angry with men. So that's why I see some women will say that all men are. Hmm? So, <laughs> so she said no. After talk, 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 he said, I, I'll give you money. So she gave the man 100k. But this man, Kabil, K A B I R, who disguised just disguised as the head of the disciplinary committee in charge of my practice she was not she just he was not at all he just a lab attendance because people were calling him doctor he started bearing doctor dr kabi the head of disciplinary committee that's who i am so she's duped a summer of 100k how did she know it was when she got to the board committee uh, committee they were like, okay, you did my practice. So can you tell us what happened? So what is your experience of the story? Share. She checked everywhere. She did not see the person she bribed. That was when she now discovered that, hey, I've messed up, I've messed up. Men have scammed me again. So she just agreed. Yes, I did my practice. Who gave you the bomb? This person gave me bomb. Hey, she implicated the person who was trying to help her. That's why most time in school, if you are trying to help person or give person bomb or tukuli, when you are caught, most of the person will not be caught, so you will be caught who is trying to help. That's why you need to be serious in school so that you don't get rusticated because of person or trying to help you fall into trouble. So she implicated the best student. The name are more questions. You see all those things. Don't worry. Don't worry. And we are both rusticated. So they also tried to punish Kabi, the lab guy who disguised as the head of the exam practice committee how did it happen kabi went to the gambling shop to gamble and he won 300k when he was going back the uh, base owners they sent uzi uzi was the first person they sent to kidnap small boy alongside the quiet person teller this same uzi came to help them beat Kabi, collect the 300k he won and gave it back to the driver, to the Benz owner. And the guy kept the money. He did not tell the Benz owner who was Habib. Salman believed that when a car stops, it either means the person wants you or they know you. She also believed that when two persons are in a car and they stop a girl, the one that is louder is the owner of the car. The one that is not very loud is probably the driver or the friend. So that was the very confusing whether Habib is actually the owner of the car or not. Sama lost her dad. The dad was buried horridly. So she went through a lot, a lot, a lot. So after the death of the dad, she became a changed person. So trying to focus, be a good student, that was when she found Salim who was dating her and promised to marry her, who engaged her. And this Salim had smartphone experience because Omar was telling the mom, Omi, that mommy, I've gained admission. I need a phone. They should give me phone. And the sister, Tima, who is the <laughs> disturber of the family, cataract with Omar, was like, you want to collect phone? So that when you go to school, you'll be carrying all the guests, pursuing all the guests. They had quarrel. And the mom, Omi, said, phone is good though. But many persons, they've also had bad experiences with phone. For example, Salim was using phone to chat with guests 
online social media what happened he went to meet a girl who he was chatting with he didn't know that they, they did a gang up to steal his father's car it was god that helped him now when the car was moving it got uh, st uh, stuck in a place and at first the car did not even start so after everything he survived that he also did not learn he went to ask another girl out on social media online the girl was so pretty fine everything complete but when he saw the girl in real life he like no 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 god forbid so all those experiences he said no i won't ask any girl out on social media now, social media is very dangerous everybody is so pretty fine you feel wow they are nice but many of them are not even that fine in real life why some of them are even guys who disguise as guys why some can even use that medium to do harm to you and the phone salim was using was samsung galaxy note series natasha was the girl who almost scammed salim she arranged with boy now when they just drive now we'll collect the car but he was lucky that did not happen so that is it on the life changer summary now you notice in the summary i dodged some names some technical terms some details why because i've already compiled them under questions important notes words and their meaning so we shall now face them i was supposed to gist only chapter three but since chapter three to seven they actually talk about the same thing they are related so i decided to combine them now let's see some questions from chapter three one who was the formidable booker in the village there's a man called the formidable booker he was the traditional medicine man so the native doctor when you are sick or you have issue you injure you meet him he gives you native medicine so in every village you find people like that so that was the formidable booker and another question i have here from chapter three is what is the real name of the quiet one the quiet one who kidnapped somebody and police came to pick him his name is tale t-a-l-l-e where did the quiet one hear the police siren it was hakini's house they summoned him to hakini's house like palace that why can't you are not buying a lot of food stuff what's happening where did you get money from so it was there the police came to arrest him where he kidnapped small boy for a week alongside zaki who was also contacted again to collect 300k from the kabi who disguised as doctor and who duped sama of hundred thousand naira now tale was guilty of three crimes this is a hot cake question the following are crimes tale was guilty of except <laughs> he was guilty of kidnapping armed robbery and extortion kidnapping armed robbery and extortion five how long did tale and zaki kidnap the little boy for one week how much did they the, uh, the, the kidnappers demand when zaki and tale kidnapped the boy they demanded one million naira. the letter came down to two hundred and fifty thousand naira. that was when the father now knew that these kidnappers are not serious from one aim you are you've not gone down to 250k <laughs> you are not serious the father of the boy now contacted the police why they were going to pay the ransom there the story burst and here it says what does emma stand for e-m-a-l so the mother told them the mother umi was telling the four children story tima means oma and the other one that in school beware of oma ima rather e-m-a-l the children were like do you mean email said no email ima which means examination my practice so emma stands for examination my practice what draws sama out of the university it was emma examination my practice Our, uh, one important word from chapter 3 is our culture of neighborliness was superlative which means the type of neighborliness 
Everybody, they know one another. And they hardly allow outsider to come in. And it's a very calm place. So they are living peacefully. Look at things you should know from chapter 3. And from chapter 4, look at some questions to take note of. Who were Salim's roommates in the hostel? They are four guests in the room actually. Who were Salman's roommates? That is the correct question. Salman herself from north. Tomiwa was from the west, specifically from Ibadan. Ngozi was from Umuze in Imo state. Ada was from Benue state. Which hostel was Salman given? Queen Amina hostel. It is regarded as the hostel for big guests, Queen Amina hostel. And why did she not like the hostel? She thought the roommate would disagree with her lifestyle or they would not be nice people. They would not understand. I need roommates that understand. That was why she thought she doesn't like the roommate at first. But she loved the hostel. But later, they were so close and they became family. Who were Sama's roommate? Tomiwa. And Tomiwa was a lover of music, fashion and entertainment. Ngozi, she is the quiet type and resident and very generous. In fact, she cooks for them. Anytime she cooks, come and eat. Anytime she cooks, come and eat. So they had to understand that ah, this guy is the nice type. Of. So that was even when they decided to start cooking together. So that it would not be one person always bringing food. Let me cook today, you cook tomorrow, I bring next tomorrow. And at that, on the other hand, they eat rats in their place. That's why when she was cooking Indomie, Sam went to meet her. I'm checking though, say so another put us in this Indomie for us to eat. Sama and Tomiwa were Muslims, while Ada and Ngozi were Christians. They did not allow religion to stop them. They were still very, very close. So, which school did Sama first gain admission to? Amadu Belo University, Zaria, Abu Zaria. Now, look at this question. Who were the men in the bands? One, Labaran, and two, Habib. Habib was the car owner, politician, and speaker. Why Labaran was the driver? Labaran and Habib were childhood friends. So, Labaran went to driving school. Why Habib went to school? When Habib was going to school, Labaran would look for small, small chance to give him to take care of himself. So, from there, Habib became rich. And decided to employ Labaran as a driver. So they were always doing things together. And it was Labaran that was teaching Habib how to carry gear. They will be driving. He will be like, that fine gear. Let's go. Let's talk. We are in chapter 5 now. What time did Tomiwa phone ring and who picked? Remember I told you that Sama gave Habib Tomiwa's number instead of her own. And also told them that her name is Tomiwa. So they called Tomiwa at 8 o'clock in the morning. So she picked and they decided to agree. And how much did Habib, Habib give to Tomiwa? 50,000 naira. 10,000 naira for each of the roommates and 20,000 naira for herself. He also bought them suya, bought chicken, bought provision for her to take to the hostel. The aides and they were happy. How did Sema's relationship with her friends or roommates contribute to her leaving the school? So Sama, Sama slept with Habib to get money for bribe. And also, she bribed the wrong person. So that made her to be rusticated. Also, the best student in the class, she also was close to her, trying to collect bomb. So she did all these things and they all led to her being rusticated. So look at some words in that chapter. Underhandedness with any female student. Underhandedness with any female student, as used in the passage, refers to secret or dishonest behavior. But he seemed suddenly tongue-tied today. 
tongue-tied simply means short of words. So, she's, but he seems suddenly tongue-tied today, as used in the passage, simply means short of words. Heartthrob. A heartthrob is someone who is so attractive that makes our heart to throb in our chest. So, Sama was a heartthrob. If even Tomiwa, very pretty, fine. So, look at more notes from chapter 5. Now, according to Ada, the essence of education was for us to live as one and seek out what unites us rather than what separates us. So, when uh, Tomiwa and Sama had issue, Ada, uh, Ada was like, it's better for us to know what unites us than what separates us. So, we are in school. We shouldn't behave like this. Let's settle. Because we gave someone else number and they are not talking to the person they are not dating so it doesn't mean you should have issue forever let's try to settle the issues and Ungozi also contributed to settling the disputes after the provisions were brought home and from chapter 6 the first question here is what was Sama's last paper moral philosophy the GST I told you about why was the female teacher intimidated when she got to the exam hall, the way she was dressed, gosh, my final year paper, ah, I will blast. Everybody, they, they go well to final year paper. They dress very well. So the female teacher or the invigilator was intimidated at the ostentatious appearance of Sama. Expensive, pretty, cool, sexy. Now, which other words can replace notes of salvation? It is simply a spoke or bomb. Who gave Sama? The notes of salvation it was color so the the person i told you was the best student in the class his name is color he was the best student he gave sam a bomb and at the end he was rusticated because they called his name at the one who supplied the bomb the disciplinary committee did not believe that color helps summer for free they were like are you guys dating are you guys doing some of things is he kissing you she said no he just helped me out. Seriously, just a friend and he's ready to lose his admission for you to give you bomb. I say, okay, it's fine. And one thing about this novel is that it's not so raw. Some things that happen just have to deduce it. So they didn't want to go into intimacy or spoil things. Meanwhile, now don't spoil now. Nah. Yes, now. Nah. Some of you have not kissed. You spoiled. So, but they didn't, have, <laughs> they didn't go into all those things for the goose no ones. So from a few are good people. So if you are good, you are good. If you are spoiled, you are spoiled. But the novel, the tune is calm. So the dimension says drugs, kissing, no. But some of them actually happened. For example, Tomiwa and the boyfriend Habib. They will also be doing one or two things. Then the driver and Sama, they may have done one or two, but the novel didn't want to go into intimacy. So the tune is that of young persons. What does every lawbreaker try to do? When you break law, you try to find a way around it. Sama was like telling the teacher, you are trying to form a good person to me now saying the HOD may help. But you gave me my, my practice form. Why did you not forgive me in the hall? Why did you take me to the HOD's office? Why did you not let things die? She was like, I've been doing my job. So I have to do this. I don't want to be fired. So I have to do my job. But that was not the reason. The sister was jealous and hated Sama because she was more beautiful than her, she dresses better than her, and people were even giving her attention more than the, the teacher. So that was why she was angry. And if it were a male supervisor, seeing fine girl, you will not give form, you just say, bring that thing back, calm down. But she was not just lucky. So Sama was not lucky. That is it. So what solution did Sama suggest to Tomiwa about the Emma issue? I was thinking of talking to Labaran to talk to Habib who would pick up a word for me in ears of the committee or the vice chancellor or someone higher up. So who was the only one that could help Sama? Professor Dabo. And Sama told to me one that I want to tell Habib he's a politician, he has influence. He will tell people and they will help me out of this malpractice. Look at this. 
Sama felt her stomach sink. On what occasion did this happen? This happened when Habib told her that the only person that I help you is Dabo. And she remembered, hey, my encounter with Dama was not good. Though. Ah, you don't spoil. You don't spoil. You choke. <laughs> so that was the occasion. And the name of the chairman of the university ethics committee was not mentioned. The university ethics committee. That's where you solve exam and practice issue. And how much did Kabi scam Sama? 100k. It was not fair what men were doing to her. No man ever treated her for her essence. They all related to her based on her looks. Sama got frustrated. Nobody's even treating me based on my essence as a person. They just treat me based on my look. Ah, you are beautiful. This one, out thing. This one, I like you. You are fine. I want to touch. Look. So she got so confused. And this is one of the problems of beautiful people. Fine guess. Face. So everybody wants to treat you based on your look. Nobody wants to really say, okay, let's talk. Everybody just wants to... Or many persons. So it's only a few that are actually responsible that want to help you. Sama mentally ran the whole gamut of the men she knew. She looked at all the men she knew and concluded that, except for her father, no man, indeed no man, was worthy of being called a man because of what she had seen in the hands of men. That was why she was not guilty. She was not even angry or remorseful for saying that Kola was the one who gave her bomb. After all, even Kola wanted to sleep with her. But she refused. So she didn't feel guilty. She was like, anything, it is what it is. We move. And in chapter 8, he said, Who was Mohammed Kabi? He was simply a laboratory technologist who disguised himself as a doctor. That is Mohammed Kabi. Why did Labaran not hand over the 300k collected from Kabi by Zaki to Habib? Now, this Zaki, it was this Labaran and Habib, the politicians, that contacted him before to kidnap the child because the father fucked up. Now, Labaran sent this Zaki again to go and treat Kabi's fuck up for scamming Sama of 100k. Now, Zaki, uh, Zaki was lucky. He caught Kabi, he just won 300k for gambling, beat the person, collected the money, handed it over to Labaran. But the guy kept it, he did not even show Habib for three reasons. I'll show you the reason. Also, the gambling area where the guy won the 300k, they also sent somebody to collect the money. So Zaki was able to overpower that guy. Details later. But look at the three reasons uh, Labaran justified him not giving the money back to Habib. One, Habib was the speaker of the house and therefore did not need 300k. So that is small money to Habib. So what does he need 300k for? Two, he reasoned that Habib was in no position to know that he took the money from Kabi. K-A-B-I-R. Because even Habib would not believe that Kabi will have 300k. Ordinary laboratory technologies. So you don't have 300k. Where is he getting it from? So for that, he did not tell Habib. And three, Labaran was sure that Habib did not give the money to Sama just like that. So Labaran believed that although me and Habib are friends, and at least I'm having interest in Sama, I know my friend is poor that he can't give you money without doing anything. So if he actually gave Sama the money after so why would I give him back? So those are the three, three reasons he felt Habib should not know about the 300 key we collected. Also, Sama's dad also when he died, he was buried immediately. So Sama, Ungazi asked Sama, why did you, why do you bury people so fast? Sama, Muslim, they bury people so fast, almost immediately. Ungazi is a Christian, so they do burial and the rest. So Ungazi was asking Sama, why do you bury people so fast and look at Sama's response the first is that we do not bury people we bury corpses as soon as a person is pronounced dead his personality automatically ceases with his last expiry breath two we were anxious for them to get away when they were ill but the moment they die our anxiety ends 
and their own begins. As creatures bound for render's voice with their creator, the more the delay, the more am- anguish that will be unleashed on the family of the bereaved. 3. Funeral delay does not have advantage on anyone. It does not help the dead and the body would begin to decompose after a while. That's the three reasons Muslims bury their dead very, very fast. But according to Ngozi, she was like, no, you don't bury people like that too. First of all, we confirm whether the person is actually dead by putting the person in mock. M-O-R-O-Q-U-E. That should be a mortuary. Then, we allow people they know if they are abroad to come, at least to see they are there, to pay the last respite. But uh, the other roommates were like, no, that will increase the pain now. When the person dies, you will cry. You remove the person from the mortuary, you cry again. You are burying the person, you cry again. So it increases the pain. And from where there are, Ozimoron was mentioned. And Ozimoron is a figure of speech that contradicts itself. Like a faithful liar. Falsely true. So that is what Ozimoron means. And no matter how much money he had, he would always lose it at the card. No matter how much money Kabi has, he was he would always lose it at the card. He was a gambler. He was always lose it. So that was what that term referred to. Now, Kabi, uh, Habib and Labaran, they hired Zaki to kidnap the boy. When the boy was caught, when they caught Zaki and the quiet neighbor, the police, they almost implicated Habib that he was the one who sent them to kidnap. But he tried to settle the matter with over quarter of a million. So quarter of a million is one million divided by four, and that is 250,000 Naira. This is a potential question. That blonde that cost me over quarter of a million. How much is quarter of a million? 250,000 Naira. She considered her trump card. Trump card simply means a valuable resource that may be used, especially as a surprise in order to gain an advantage. Oman said, greeting his teeth in a maniacal sort of way, meaning exhibiting extremely wide or violent behavior. So these are the points you should take from chapter 8. These are questions from chapter 9. What kind of phone did Salim buy? Samsung Galaxy Note series. It had a wide screen that responded to a stylus touch, as well as fingers of the owner. Now, most persons in the uh, novel are using touch light. So Salim bought Samsung phone, screen touch. That was when screen touch was raining. That can touch the screen though. So that was the phone he bought. And what was Salim's smartphone experience? One, Natasha aligned with robbers to steal his car, his father's car actually. Two, chatting with wrong person, the princess, he was saying my princess, my online princess. So it turned out to be hideous, unpresentable creature, very ugly, casted. She went with his friend Lawa to meet the girl. And the reason he called Lawa to meet the new girl on social media was because of the previous experience where they almost robbed her. When they almost robbed him, Salim, he was like, okay, let me go with my friend now for security reasons. According to Novel, how do social media guests do guys? Lawa was now telling Salim, these are the ways social media guests do boys. So these lines will also help you in school. One, the demand small small things. Send me card. I need urgent 1K. I need urgent 2K. I need urgent 3K. <laughs> Two, they gradually, they graduate into sending money. You start sending them small, small money. They will say, ah, I'm broke. Something is happening. I'm just here. I'm stuck here. My transfer is not working. You send them money. Three, she would key her relations and ask you to send funeral money. This question is very short. She would key her relations and ask you to send funeral money. What does it mean according to the passage? It simply means those social media girls they will claim that they are pair, uh, someone is dead in their family. Say, ah, I just lost somebody. I lost my sister. I lost this. 
you now feel bad for them. You now say, okay, please hold this thing to support. Like, thank you, thank you. So the fake people's dead are sent to you just to exploit you. Also, they lie about their location. They lie about them. Then, also, they can ask you to come and visit them. When you get there, they will not pick your call. Or, or they will just switch off the phone. And finally, kidnappers can disguise and kidnap you. Find girl, be, look, you follow, travel to meet girl. You collect your phone, collect everything, you move out. This guy you are looking for now. So it was even from this last line that Salim told Lawada, ah, not lie you, they almost kidnapped me, they almost took my car. According to Salim, what is the standard prayer in calamity? It is simply, from God we came and unto him is our returning. You see that Muslim word, that is the translation. It's actually a Muslim word, that word I told you earlier. So look at some words. She must be a quintessential beauty for you. Quintessential simply means perfect, of quality, of high class. So Lawa told Salim, wow, this girl is so beautiful. So she must be a quintessential beauty for you. Hell, my friend, are you a clairvoyant? A clairvoyant is simply a person who claims to have a supernatural ability to perceive events in the future or beyond normal sensory contact. Now, send you on a wild goose chase. As used in the passage and chapter 9 simply means a foolish and hopeless search for our pursuit of something unattainable. And look at it. Salim was on the following social uh, media or social networks. Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, Badu, Togo, and WeChat. And Lawa was Salim's friend. So at the end, Sama repented, became a good girl, and Salim engaged her. So they became okay. So that is the end of the story. I hope you found this helpful. So feel free to let me know how you feel using the comment box. I'll share a link for you to download the full novel. I'll share a link for you to get the Flatteners application. You'll find it very, very helpful.